For those of you old enough to remember video game magazines, one of my favourite parts was the two page spread that you used to get after the main reviews that would include 8 or 10 mini reviews of some of the other games that had come out that month. Well due to the vast amount of review codes that we are sent, we are going to start a new series called Review Roundup. This will be 3 or 4 bite sized reviews all in one video and we start today with 1917 The Alien Invasion, Wizard Fire and Glaive Brick Breaker. Thank you to the respective developers for the review codes, let's get started. Remember towards the end of World War I when aliens inexplicably invaded the Earth? You don't? What happened? Did you fall asleep during history class? 1917 The Alien Invasion is a bullet hell shoot em up that tells such a story. The graphics are pixel based and have seemingly taken inspiration from 16 bit iterations of Wolfenstein and Doom in terms of both the imagery and the hellish aesthetic. You start on what remains of Earth before departing for outer space and then finding yourself in the inner belly of the alien's lair. This gives the level some variety and some of the stage boss designs are genuinely bizarre. There is also a different music track for each level and these range from bombastic to fairly surreal to almost melancholic at times. Nineteen Seventeen is a vertical shoot em up with one hit kills unless you manage to grab one of the shield power ups that float around the levels. The action is fast paced and everything runs quite smoothly. You have screen clearing moves that you can acquire and infinite lives although any death will result in you having to start at the very beginning of that particular stage again. The levels that you complete can be played in the stage select screen later so you don't have to finish the game in one sitting and there are local leaderboards and four planes to play as, albeit only two are unlocked from the start. The game costs £6.29 or $7.99 and this is the biggest problem. Whilst this isn't an unfair price by any means, it does put the game in direct competition with some of the Neo Geo classic shoot em ups such as Blazing Star and that's not a war that this game is going to win unfortunately. Having said that, 1917 is still a fun game and the level select screen is ideal for playing on the go and it receives a switch up score of 71%. Next up we have Wizard Fire, one of Data East's arcade games brought to the Switch under the Johnny Turbo arcade banner. This was a follow up to Gates of Doom, also available on the Switch and is a fantasy adventure game set on an isometric playing field. You can choose from five different characters including a knight, a wizard and a bard and battle through dungeons, caverns and sandstorms to try and rid the world of evil. The sprite graphics still look impressive to this day with chunky characters and lush environments and there are a nice mix of different enemies to fight and some quite imposing looking boss characters as well. The music is suitably heroic and fits the action well. and the game also includes digitized speech in the cutscenes which are also nice and colourful. Wizard Fire supports local multiplayer and this really increases the enjoyment factor. Fighting alongside a friend to clear the dungeons of foes and grab the loot they leave behind is a lot of fun and to be fair the game is a decent time in single player too. As an arcade game it was of course designed to take your money so it holds no prisoners in terms of its difficulty but like all of the Johnny Turbo releases you can give yourself as many credits as you want with a press of the R button. The game controls well with the only slight gripe being that lining up attacks on enemies can sometimes be difficult due to the isometric view. This is most noticeable on bosses 
when you only have a short window to get a tax in. The game costs £6.29 or $7.99 and your playtime will very much depend on your skill level but also how disciplined you are when it comes to giving yourself more credits. Even on completion though, it's still a fun game to return to with a friend from time to time. Wizardfire receives a switch up score of 70%. Finally we have Glaive Brickbreaker. This is a breakout clone, but probably has a bit more in common with later variants of Breakout such as Arkanoid. For anyone who has never played a variation of Breakout, the basic idea is to steer a ball towards bricks which will disappear when touched. You move the ball by bouncing it off of a paddle that you control and clearing all of the bricks completes the level. This is by the numbers Breakout, albeit the levels become more complex as you move on and include things such as controlling a paddle at either side of the screen and blocks that must be destroyed in a certain order. There are also power-ups that drop as you play, and these can do anything from allowing you to catch the ball and reposition yourself before redeploying it, or speeding up your paddle. They can also have a negative effect too, such as reducing the size of your paddle or slowing it down. The graphics are, quite frankly, a little odd. The background looks like the inside of someone's boiler cupboard, and the music is equally ill-fitting. It seems to range from 90s clubbing music from somewhere in Ibiza, to the sort of elevator music you would hear whilst travelling up to the menswear department in a large store. The controls are decent enough, although the paddle, or glaive, does feel a little stiff and sometimes you will swear that you use all of your knowledge of physics to hit the ball in such a way that it should travel left, only for it to travel right instead. The game costs £8.99 or $8.99 and you do get a lot of levels plus boss battles and a local two player versus mode for your money. However, you can't skip levels that you get stuck on and this is quite a difficult game to master so how much of this content you ever get to see very much depends on your levels of perseverance. Glaive Brickbreaker gets a switch up score of 55%. Thank you everyone for watching this video, we hope you like this new series. We are always looking to find new and interesting content to bring you, so let us know what your thoughts are on this particular one in the comments section below. If you did like what you saw or heard, please leave a like down below and consider subscribing if you haven't already for all things Switch all the time here at Switch Up and as always, happy gaming.